Hello, it's David at DCES UK, and today I have for you an impromptu fault-finding video based upon a real-world job we attended but didn't film this past week. If you'll allow me to paint you a picture of the scene, we'll work through it together, and there's a kind of interesting angle to this one. Nothing earth-shattering or never seen before, you understand. Just one to watch out for, as it can fool both you, your socket tester, and your MFT. At least at face value. We attended a domestic dwelling built in year 2000 and equipped with a MEM, these days Eaton, Memera 2000 consumer unit. Notice circuit 2, fixed ring. Those who have been knocking around for a while will recognise that in the late 1990s, early 2000s, builders wiring new houses to the 16th edition wiring regulations at that time were required to provide RCD protection for socket outlets. However, that was about all. House builders, being the corner-cutting, tight-fisted wankers they were, and still are today, look to save costs. So rather than put the kitchen on a separate socket circuit requiring a second RCD or RCBO, they instead installed an appliance circuit, sometimes referred to as a fixed ring. That nomenclature relates to the fact that, like the house socket circuit, this was a 32 amp ring arrangement, however it served no socket outlets that were accessible under daily operation. Instead, it tended to power fused connection points that kitchen white goods such as fridges, freezers and dishwashers were hardwired into when fixed in place. It was a stupid arrangement that was fortunately short-lived. Stupid because if the dishwasher or fridge died, the homeowner then had to get a sparky out to disconnect the duff appliance and the new one either had to be hardwired back in after its manufacturer supplied plug top was chopped off or more likely, the connection point was instead replaced with an ordinary outlet so that any new appliance could easily be connected going forward. Although that now meant a socket outlet that lacked RCD protection unless some upgrade jiggery pokery was applied back at the consumer unit. Anyway, from my experience, you will only see these fixed ring appliance circuits on builds from that era, and there are many around my neck of the woods here in Middle Earth, such as on Warwick Gates, a suburban housing estate built during the millennium to a housing spec that was horribly dated from new, with features nobody's wanted since the 1980s, such as Artec ceilings and silly faux Greek pillars. Also, every bloody road is cheesily named after a Shakespearean reference, there's not enough parking, and it's an absolute fucking maze of a place, chock full of dead ends, narrow bottlenecks, and traffic calming ridiculum that'll get the sweat frosting on your scrotum if you're not armed with a sane sat-nav to get you the hell out of there. I don't know what goes through the heads of town planners. It's like they throw wet spaghetti onto the floor and then design a road layout to whatever sticks where. Still, at least Warwick Gates was built at a time when you could have the temerity to build a road passing through it. New estates these days, like this one in nearby Bishop's Tashbrook, have only one way in and out to prevent anyone having to live on what might be thought of as a rat run. Or for a real mindfuck, check out Barker's Close in Southam. It's all over the fucking place with dead ends on top of dead ends. Look where number 14 is compared to number 18. Tradespeople, delivery drivers and presumably emergency service workers are expected to navigate this silly bullshit. This town, like many others I'm sure, is regularly gridlocked because when highway maintenance is required, everyone is forced onto the same trunk routes and there are no cut-throughs anywhere on the new estates that those with a little local knowledge can take advantage of. Oh God, where was I? This is supposed to be a video about a trip fault and instead I've alienated all my customers on Warwick Gates. I will say this for Warwick Gates though, they do have a mighty fine chippy. Parking there can be a bastard as it is all over the rest of that estate, but when you're in the drunken mood for a filthy kebab, that's the place to go get it. Okay, so I really need to get on with this bloody video. What's the problem at this domestic installation, you ask? Well, I'll tell you what the fucking problem is, pal. We've undertaken an EICR on this property and we've balls things right up. That's the problem. Moving away from the problem to the point, how did we do it and how can we prevent it from happening again? So here's our Mamera 2000 consumer unit, and we have additional protection by an RCD device on three circuits only. Hot tub, socket outlets, and lights down. Okay, so hot tub is clearly not original to the house. That's been added after the fact by persons unknown, and is defunct anyway, as the chavy human soup warmer has been removed by the time of our visit, leaving only a lonely legacy rotary isolator sitting on the exterior wall and serving no purpose. I don't know why lights down is RCD protected, Lights upstairs would have made more sense, seeing as BS7671 is so anal on additional protection for bathrooms, and lights up is what's serving the bloody bathroom, but we are where we are. Socket outlets are RCD protected, however that fixed ring circuit is not. 
Okay, so the 16th edition standards 23 years ago said fixed appliances didn't need additional protection. Well, I presume it did. It was before my time and I have no reference material other than my own observations in the field. However, since the original build, a kitchen fitter has been present. Oh. Yeah, a fucking kitchen fitter. Discovering one of them has been interfering with your electrics is like finding out a known paedophile has been whatsapping pee pee pics to your kids. Going back to my diagram, the core colours of the original building wiring are red and black rather than brown and blue, as the installation predates the EU harmonisation back around 2004. Upon our inspection and testing, there is evidence of more recent modifications, betrayed by an obviously newer aesthetic to the kitchen fitted furniture, and there being post harmonisation brown and blue wiring colours present at many kitchen accessories. This indicates the kitchen has been remodelled sometime more recently. Electrical alterations lack the workmanship of the spark who wired the place out originally back in Y2K. House builders back then may have been tight, but the workmanship of their electrical contractors tended to be okay, unlike new builds today, which are fucking shocking and will become the EICR nightmares of the future for anyone appointing the likes of us to undertake inspection and testing later down the line. So we still have a fixed appliance circuit serving items such as the central heating and cooker hood, but it's now also powering two under counter sockets located under the sink and at the back of a cupboard and one outlet above the worktop. The outlet in the cupboard is a little hidden away and has the gas hob plugged into it for its electronic ignition. That's got a gas pipe serving it of course and that pipe is electrically bonded to the main earthing terminal. Crikey, this is getting a bit crowded. Not the best thought out visual aid, I'm afraid. In fact, it's giving me visual aids just looking at it. Anyway, we unplug the hob and duly get on with our inspection and testing. The first thing we start with is a functional test by turning on all the lights and using a socket tester to check outlets for basic polarity, functionality, and any missing earthing. That's just a quick and dirty procedure to help us clock the general condition and physical operation of the accessories and for us to familiarise ourselves with the site. With this fluke tester, two green lights indicates correct wiring. No sockets report any issues on the functional test and everything eventually passes on this circuit in terms of ring end-to-end -end continuity, earth fault loop impedance, at least at the points we can get to, insulation resistance, polarity, etc. However, during our testing, which is usually pretty thorough, we somehow must have overlooked this hidden cupboard socket. When inspecting and testing an existing electrical installation, there are always going to be some limitations, often because some accessories are inaccessible. This outlet wasn't inaccessible, but obviously going by later events, it can't have been checked, as I'll come to. These mem boards are quite interesting because they have the RCBO pod system, which is rather clever. Any MCB can be converted into an RCBO, as I shall demonstrate here. Here I have a Type B32 Mem Shield 2 MCB. It's got a locking tab on the top, most manufacturers have them on the bottom, but uh, that's what locks it onto the buzz bar. And we have this little stop here that stops the tab from being pushed fully out. But it's quite straightforward to convert this to an RCBO using just a screwdriver if you buy the RCBO kit, which consists of these three parts. And we'll have a look at those in just a moment. If I were to pull the face plate off the thing first of all, remove the stop at the back, and then push out the locking tab. Then next I take my RCBO pod, simply click it into place. That comes with a new faceplate that accommodates the test button and also tells you that it's a 30 milliamp type A RCBO. And we get a new longer locking thang to stick in there along with our stop. There you go. Job jobbed. How nice and quick was that? And that would mean that you could keep a stock of just the RCBO pods and a stock of breakers and you could just marry up uh, a pod to a breaker to whichever value you saw fit. And again, the fact that these are type A from back in the day, that's a pretty good thing, isn't it? Because when Eaton took over MEM, they dropped this range, dropped MEM Shield 2, moved to MEM Shield 3, which isn't directly compatible. And I don't know if that was because they didn't have the rights to the MEM Shield 2 range or uh, there was some kind of licensing issue or something like that, or they just thought, to hell with that, that's far too convenient and lovely. Let's just stick with fixed value RCBOs, type AC as well. I mean, jeepers creepers, manufacturers. I mean, they all knew that the writing was on the wall for type AC from a long time ago. So 
why they persisted with that when other countries had already moved to Taipei and when existing previous ranges of theirs also accommodated Taipei. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. It, it beggars belief, it really does. You can still get the MEM RCBO pods, but they're stupid expensive. Ten times what you might pay for an RCBO made by other brands. In fact, more even than a modern AFDD, which offers overload, RCD and ARC protection, which rather makes these MEM things financially unviable unless you only have one circuit to upgrade and can't be asked to change out the whole consumer unit. Certainly, converting a MEM board such as this to full RCBO operation is possible, but the part costs alone would pucker up anyone's sphincter. A whole new board replacement with AFDDs and surge protection would offer better value for money. And why is that? It's a clever system and perhaps rightly attracts a premium price for the flexibility it offers. But there's nothing terribly special here that commands such a price point, unless it's down to some kind of patent licensing on the design. Otherwise, it's an example of a manufacturer mugging us installers off. And it's not just mem. For everybody who thinks the sun shines out of Hager's rosy red asshole, well, here's a reason why I don't rate them. If I need to change an existing RCD to type A at 100 amps, Look at the fucking price they're being sold for at cities. But I can prove a 100 amp Type A Hager RCD doesn't cost this much, because for just an extra four quid, the same retailer offers two of the bloody things, along with copper tails, an enclosure, buzz bar and main switch. You're better off ordering this thing, keeping the two RCDs and binning the rest that you don't need. So don't swallow any green eco bullshit Hager offer, as their pricing model here encourages waste. And don't tell me it's just CEF, as I've paid through the arse for Hager RCDs at Edmondson's, and although cheaper from there, about half price in fact, at 62.92 including VAT, the first two they supplied me with were physically faulty, so all the lost time in diesel still saw me out of pocket. Hager? Fuck them. Anyway, I'm looking at this MEM board on our inspection and I'm thinking I may as well disconnect the hot tub circuit, as it isn't doing anything anyway, and swap the expensive RCBO pod from the redundant C32 breaker to the B32 breaker serving the appliance ring. So I do. And bingo bongo, the white goods and sockets in the kitchen now have 30 milliamp type A additional protection, and it knocks a bunch of observations off the report in one fell swoop. OK, I know I'm supposed to just be there for the inspection and testing and not to make alterations, but if there are any tweaks we can apply while the power is off and the tools are out, then we may as well. We can always levy a small charge on top of the inspection work for any alterations undertaken on the day, and it saves having to arrange to come back. Most clients trust us to make common sense decisions when we've got boots on the ground if it cancels out observations and cleans up the report. So the pod gets swapped out with the wiring altered so that the circuit's neutral is connected to the RCBO and the RCBO is connected to the neutral bar. The fixed ring appliance circuit becomes RCD protected. We finish our inspection, plug the tenants, gadgets and gizmos back in, click the thing on and we drive off with big smiles on our faces. At around nine o'clock that evening, I'm attending to my usual chores when I get a call from the landlord to say the tenant is reporting the appliance circuit has tripped off and won't reset. Ten minutes later I'm back on site like a frickin' hero and sure enough this circuit is tripped and won't click back on. Well that's okay, it just means the tenant has plugged in a faulty appliance and the earth leakage detection is doing its job. I know it's not a fault with the fixed wiring as it all earlier passed testing. So I switch off all fuse units and unplug all appliances to find, as expected, that the RCBO now resets accordingly. The circuit remains stable until the gas hob is plugged back into that sneaky cupboard socket, at which case the RCBO trips again. I've recreated the fault here on my test rig, albeit with an RCD instead of an RCBO, but it'll behave in the same way. These two outlets represent my appliance circuit, and I can plug a socket tester into either one for a basic functional test, which, as you can see, it passes. The upper outlet represents the hob socket hiding away in the cupboard. The lower outlet represents all other loads on that circuit. This fan heater is standing in for the hob, seeing as cooking facilities are a feature the Twat Cave lacks, although I don't mind admitting I do have a well-stocked beer fridge. In the real installation, the gas pipe serving the hob was bonded to earth, so I've put a clip cable between the metalwork of the fan heater and the main earthing terminal of my test rig to simulate that same electrical setup. I'm going to plug in a light to simulate the other loads present on that circuit, such as the central heating, and, well, we can see that's working just cock and indeed on. But watch what happens to the RCD when I plug in my substitute hob fan heater. 
Aha, there we go. That ain't going back on. So what are we saying? Faulty hob? Well, we can use the pat adapter that I made back in May 2020. Gosh, that seems like a long time ago. Uh, we can use this to perform uh, an insulation resistance test of our pretend hob appliance. If the resistance of the insulating materials between live parts and earth parts has completely broken down or become compromised, then forcing 500 volts through it using my Robin 1630 multifunction tester ought to expose the fault. And it would explain why plugging in the hob is taking out the RCD. Here goes. The Robin will squirt 500 volts DC up line and neutral of the plug top and if there's any current leak back to the earth pin then we'll get a reading of zero point fuck all. Oh look at that. It seems to have passed. The Robin's on a 200 mega ohm range and we're showing off scale. So uh, we're not talking naught point something here. We're saying the insulation of this appliance as tested is over 200 million ohms. So there's no earth fault here. Okay, a basic socket tester reports the outlets are okay. An insulation resistance test determines the appliance is sound. And we know the fixed wiring passes an IR test as that was verified in the inspection. Yet connecting our faux hob takes it out every time and keeps it from resetting too. What does an MFT make of all this? Well, again, I'll use the Robin 1630 on the same socket outlet. Uh, without the pretend cooking appliance plugged in, of course. Uh, and this time with it just switched to the voltage setting. And we're getting a live reading there, 243 odd volts. But notice as well that we have two green LEDs which are lit and indicate that line neutral is healthy and so is line earth. This instrument uses the term phase instead of line, but you can see it's reporting a healthy supply. I won't do it, but in this installation, if I were to open up the socket, then the polarity of the wiring behind would be visually accounted for, i.e. brown goes to line, blue goes to neutral, and green yellow goes to earth at the terminals of the socket itself. In the words of the late and not so great Rolf Harris, do you know what it is yet? I bet one of you smart ass keyboard warriors is screaming at their screen right now. Okay, well here's a clue. Let me plug the other loads back in with the light there. And if I take the plug top for my pretend hob, uh, I don't have to physically insert this whole plug top into the socket outlet for the trip to occur. Uh, it'll do it as soon as I touch the earth pin of the plug top to the socket outlet itself. Observe. <laughs> yeah, what does that tell you? Well, it tells you it's not a fault with this appliance after all. To prove that, I can even, if I reset it, I can even plug this appliance into the other socket, switch it on, and it works just as it ought to be. Right, so we're looking for a fault that only affects this outlet, which doesn't show up on a socket tester or an MFT that's monitoring voltage and polarity, and that only occurs if other loads are present on the same circuit and pulling power. It can only be one thing, and yes, as you may well have already guessed, our Dipit kitchen fitter has indeed reversed neutral and CPC. But not at the socket. Oh no, that would be too easy to find. And not at the above counter fuse unit either. No, this prick's done it at an intermediate point, a connection plate hiding behind the oven. So for goodness knows how many years, the hob ignition has been running on line CPC instead of line neutral. And it's never been noticed before because this circuit previously lacked RCD protection. But that's one weakness of your basic socket testers and even your MFT. They can't detect a neutral earth reversal, at least not on the face of it. With the MFT, if I were to now undertake a no-trip earth fault loop impedance test on our good socket, then we should get the number that we expect, and indeed we do. However, if I were to try it on our bad socket, off she trips. How was this not picked up on the EICR? Well, although we found the socket and plugged the load and performed the basic functional test, we clearly must have forgotten it when undertaking both our R1 plus R2 and ZS tests. Either of those would have shown it up as a fault localized to this outlet only. As for why the RCBO was on and stable when we left, well, either that circuit wasn't under any current draw from the other connected appliances at that time, or we left site neglecting to plug the hob back in and the tenant duly reconnected it afterwards, thus causing a trip. I honestly can't remember. 
For those who perhaps haven't followed my shoddy explanation, let's look at a simplified version of the electrical setup. Other loads represents the additional appliances on this circuit and they're correctly connected to line and neutral at other points and are pulling their normal demand current. The socket serving the hob has neutral and earth reversed at the connection plate, which isn't a problem until we plug in an appliance such as the hob, in which case we're suddenly shorting the entire circuit neutral to the earth pin of the socket, which is connected to the metalwork of the hob, which is itself physically fixed to a metallic gas pipe that's bonded back to earth. When this happens, some of the current being used by the other loads doesn't return to the RCBO via the neutral wiring. Instead, it leaks down the earth pin of the hob plug and to earth via the gas pipe. With the RCBO at 30 milliamps, it only takes somewhere between 16 and 30 milliamps of leakage for the RCBO to operate and trip off. Of course, it'll remain off while this fault is present and so long as the other appliances are trying to pull sufficient current. So there you go, and it's simply Sod's law that the one socket we forgot about would be the one with the fault. It's just one of those out of sight, out of mind deals, and we all make similar slip ups, I'm sure. The miswire has been present for years, and it was only our attempt to make best use of existing resources while improving overall safety did it come to light, but we should have found it with either an R1, R2 test or a ZS test. Anyway, I thought I'd make the video to illustrate you can't rely on a basic socket tester or even an MFT on just voltage and polarity. They'll both be fooled by this kind of fault, at least on a TN system, because neutral and earth are electrically connected at the head, so a basic test cannot determine if they have been miswired. Also, who knew we were fallible? <sighs> well, obviously I'm not, I don't make mistakes, so somehow this is all Nigel's fault. That silly twat is getting a disciplinary when he next shows up for work. Are we boring you, Nick? Sorry, mate. We are here on one of John Bullbag's jobs, hence the luxurious location <laughs> for today. Bit of sun. Bit of sun. And celebrity coffee shout outs because yeah, yeah. we have none other than Adam the Apprentice. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> The Adam Apprentice YouTube yeah, channel. Really, and really like the bad smell that we can't get rid of following us around. You know what? We did that TF Live 23 video, and everyone was like, Oh, bloody hell, Nick Bundy appearing I again. Know, I know. If they do it in all of his videos as well, but it is what it is. Sorry, guys, can't get rid of me yet. Mm, uh, yeah, so, well, he's, he's following us around, as I say, like the bad penny. Pretty sure I was here first. Uh, perhaps you were, yeah. but uh, John Bullbag is paying us all to be here today, and as that's why we're doing this. As you can see, we're working really hard. <laughs> Cheers, John. In fact, I'm not quite so sure that I can even justify the day rate for for Nige. <laughs> He's not done that much work. <laughs> Mind you, neither's Nick. So, uh, so there you go. Me and Adam have yeah. done. We've been like heroes well, today, haven't we? Heroes right? to their zeros. Oh. But we're going to read out a few coffee names, and I've, I've even taken the liberty of writing out some of the names for the the chaps to read out. Nigel, would you like to start? Derek H, who is a whore and uh, says that maybe the Angry Karen is an educational video helping people understand a bit of mental health. Well, maybe so. Uh, Nicholas? And we have a CFM Electrical. We do indeed. And I'm going to swap hands here because that would make more sense, wouldn't it? Uh, who says you need this after your last video. Uh, I, I presume that was the Karen video and mm. not the CF Live video, although after being with Nick or him crashing our video three times, we do indeed <laughs> need another drink. Adam? I've got rich. I'm, I'm glad somebody did, because yeah. we're fucking not. Uh, great channel, gents. Yes, yes. Got here via Mr. Bundy. Oh, thank you, Nick. A week ago, and now, having wasted many working hours watching you, I owe you a beer stroke, Stogie. So, uh, welcome, Rich. You are a virgin. Yeah, so, and thank you for your, you your contribution. I should have said uh, CFM Electrical is a promotion to the whores list. Oh. But going back to virgins, we have... Martin. We do indeed. Martin has nothing to say. Oh, Nothing to say. Well done, Martin. Oh, that's my Makes kind of change. commenter. Following Martin, we have... We have the anonymous coward. Yes, uh, there's somebody who doesn't want to give their name, doesn't want to be associated, but... You blame him. Still wants to uh, send yeah. some, some liquid lusciousness our way. I've got Andy Karish. Andy Karish! Karish. You have to that say Karish. it like that. Everybody says his name like that. Karish! Karish. Uh, who's, who's everybody? One of our regulars. Right. Well, presumably everybody who knows Andy Karish. Contribute a little something to help you through the week. Well, oh, thank you very much. Andy Carouge, a virgin. Dexter Godfrey. Of DG Electrical Solutions. My wife cannot understand why on God's earth I would want to watch two old spunkers waffling on about boring electrical stuff. That's exactly what you said, mate. What? Yeah. Well, I imagine he doesn't watch you either. 
fair. <laughs> uh, to the oldest apprentice in the Northwest. Who says, you two clowns still produce the most real and informative content than some of those other smug young pricks. Please keep it up. You two are still the best. It's to actually say that. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> Cheers, oldest apprentice in the Northwest. Fair. Fair but accurate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got Andy Anoy Droid or Alan Madigan. Beautifully read. Beautifully yeah. read. You show what you're doing and have a laugh doing it. Yeah. I assure you there's no laughing here because Nigel and I hate each other and Nigel's indeed a prick. <laughs> Speaking of Nigel's. Nigel Topman. Well done, Nigel. Who is a whore and has something to say. Finally, for the Buy Me A Coffee platform for this round. It's Mr Humbug. It is Mr Humbug, a regular of ours who also has nothing to say. Moving on to our super wanks. First super wanker. Muggles 87. A virgin super wanker. Thank you, Muggles 87. Another virgin super wanker. Is it Jeff Hubbard or Hubert? Hubbard. Hubbard 6916. Oh, it just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Just rolls off. A whore on the super wank platform. We have a relative of Adam. It's Tony Dunlop. Mm, not your dad, is it? No, that's the uncle that, um, Fair enough. <laughs> the uncle that nobody speaks of. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. I'm sorry nobody speaks of you. Uh, a virgin. We've got Paul. Is that Wather? Walt Hugh. Walt Hugh. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, the youngsters today. Um, useless. You're useless. Right, mate. Yeah. Mind you, you're useless as well, and you're not young. Yeah. A whore. I'm so sorry. You t- you've got to stop this shit, mate. <laughs> Every top. <laughs> Just read the fucking name. <laughs> Asshole. Anonymous Mark Eastwood. Anonymous Mark Eastwood. Thank you once again for your regular contributions, you whore. A virgin. We have Chris, 220480. Another one that simply masturbates off the tongue. Yes. Welcome to the platform. And a one more virgin for this round. Jamie Metcalf, 547. There are plenty more super wanks for us to read out, but YouTube doesn't tell us when they came in, so goodness knows if they were before or after the cut-off date. We will get to you. Other crap is an edit. One quick special mention to Tom, who was out on the Banfield Work Experience with us last week. Good luck with your interviews, Tom. I think that's probably it for today, isn't it? Uh, there's probably a little bit more work for us to do, Adam. Nothing for, of course, the shirkers uh, here. Uh, and uh, especially Nigel. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, John, about... Uh, maybe I'll just, just give you Nigel's time for free today because what can you do? Shut up, ball bag. Does he know you're calling that? Just. Oh, fuck! I fed up with you!